morning everyone and this is actually the second time I've spoken here this week so I feel I'm sort of at home. Um, I've got eight minutes so I'll try and keep to it but we'll see. Um, I, I started off by calling it Research Intensive University. So the staff at Chinese U care about publications and grants. They are also committed as teachers but if you're going to ask people to put time and effort into teaching, it has to be a pragmatic solution. So what I'm going to talk about are three things. One, a bit of the history, because unlike the previous speakers, I seem to have been at Chinese Two forever. Um, and so we do have a history. I think I'm going to stress, because it is a research-intensive university and also because it's what I believe, that data used strategically um, and working within the context. They're the keys. And just having principles without data doesn't get you very far. And then finally, just very briefly, go through the strategies that we actually use. Um, it's a bit dense, that one, but I'll try to go through it really quickly. The history um, started off, really, I guess, with WebCT arriving at the university. But here, I think, is an important time but as soon as I came to Chinese U, I realized that it had to be a partnership. So that CLEAR, which is the Center for Learning Enhancement and Research Mob, um, uh, worked with ITSC, our IT Services Center, and the library. I think we often forget the library. Um, the, they're the three uh, links to the school, if you like, and unless there's really close relationship between those three key uh, service areas in the university don't get much uh, traction. Um, we then started off with a, an intensive study of e-learning. And by that, it wasn't just the logs on WebCT. It was looking at students' uh, preferences, staff's preferences. It was qualitative and quantitative and was published. Now, that study was used to actually get money. Um, at the same time, and notice there's a parallel, teaching now counts in promotion at Chinese U. It's a research intensive university, but statistically I can show you data that shows that your teaching score uh, gives you a much better chance of promotion. So that's been very helpful. Um, we used all of that stuff to get funding. Uh, and now, 2006. The UGC Smart, and when they announced um, the OBA stuff and the beginning of planning for the four-year curriculum, these were flags that change was, was uh, around in Hong Kong. Um, and um, I think that we should see these as opportunities. The QAC, the four-year curriculum, um, and uh, OBA are actually opportunities for the use of technology because technology is about innovation, change, um, interaction, and so on. And we should use these strategically. Uh, we got some course lead development. Um, interestingly, and I'll say more about that, we now have people in departments who we call these learning liaison people. Um, QAC came to Chinese U, which was um, I think a really good opportunity. Um, I'll talk more about e-learning assistance, and then we actually have an e-learning strategy. We actually have that. Now, we have that because we have the QAC that sort of pushed that agenda along a bit, that enabled us to pull things together. So the history, by and large, is that there's an intertwining between government initiatives, teaching and learning initiatives, and development of technology, and they have to be seen as working together, always underpinned by some sort of data collection and reflection. Now, we do actually have a framework that, I can't say widely shared, but it's, it's at least acknowledged that if you're thinking about how to work with technology, you have to think about what are the things that are the drivers that support what you're trying to do, and what are the factors that you have to overcome? In other words, what is it that uh, leaves a laissez-faire approach? How do you actually maintain, overcome those inhibitors? And this sort of idea that if any initiative that we set up at Chinese U, we have this discussion. 
how is it going to actually work on the drivers that we know we have, which is institutional research, as I said, QAC. Um, the fact that we have a new all singing, all dancing student information system, how do we use those sorts of things in order to drive change, to drive integration and coordination? Now, I could talk for hours on this, and obviously I don't have hours to talk about it, but the point I want to make is that you, you need to think in your institution, in your context, what is it that helps the institution move along, which is this column, and what is it that you have to overcome? And I think each institution needs to match that and map that quite consciously. And then when you start up projects, say, is it going to fit into this? Is it going to, you know, to be something that's going to work? And for us, that's been a useful strategic sort of framework to talk about in our centre and with colleagues in our city. Um, efficiency and effectiveness, that's obvious, I think. Now, I, I know I'm old, but does anyone else know the, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Anyone who's over here? Yeah, okay, fine. Well, anyway. Um, I think you have to be honest about what's good. You know, graphs that go up to the right are good. And obviously, we've got this steady growth, whatever that means. Uh, Moodle has been um, a very strong um, initiative at Chinese U. And as WebCT is moving out, whether we go to Blackboard or we just go to Moodle is something that we have to think about. The OK means that if you look at our data, you see that we have, um, you know, obviously, massive content. Well, we do have discussions, um, and they're there. Um, it's okay. You know, I'd say that that data is okay.